haya tunapojifundisha kuhusu karama hizi nataka tutungue bibilia zetu tasoma maandiko marefu ndogo eh, ili tuweze kujifundisha uh, nataka tutungue bibilia zetu katika kitabu cha Wakorintho wa kwanza chapter 14 kwa chapter 14 ndio kitabu chapter 12 Ruka chapter 13 na niliwaambia mweze kusoma chapter 13 kwa wakati wenu kwa sababu chapter 13 inazungumzia kuhusu upendo love 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 faith and charity Biblia inazungumzia kuhusu upendo Hallelujah Biblia inazungumzia kuhusu nini upendo faith and hope chapter 13 chapter 13 hadi just hold on a little bit chapter 13 you will want to go and read it on time baada ya kufundisha kuhusu karama zote za roho biblia inazungumzia kuhusu umuhimu wa upendo umuhimu wa upendo chochote kinachofanywa katika nyumba ya Mungu kinatakiwa kufanywa katika upendo hata wakati ambao ukweli unahubiriwa ukweli unaweza kujiliwa ama mtu anaweza sema ukweli lakini asema ukweli katika hasira na kwa sababu sio sisi tunabadilisha kama watu Roho mtakatifu anabadilisha. Mahali ambapo kuna upendo even when you are speaking the truth. Love softens the heart. Hata ya mtu ambaye ni muovu na mtu ambaye anaishi kwa maisha ambayo hampendezi Mungu. Na kwa hivyo upendo Biblia kwa maana nimesema muende kusome kwa wakati wengi. Upendo umeinuliwa juu sana. Upendo umeinuliwa juu ya karaba zingine zote. Then faith and hope haya mambo matatu. That is chapter 13. But now chapter 14 nataka tusome. Tutasoma tukiskip kidogo chapter 14 Biblia inazunguza hivi. Follow the way of love again. Biblia inatangulia na na kuzunguza kuhusu upendo. Follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the spirit, especially prophecy. Nabi for anyone who speaks in uh, in a tongue do not speak to people but to God indeed no one understands them they utter mystery by the spirit but the one who prophesies speaks uh, to the people for their own strengthening and encouraging and comfort anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves But the one who prophesies edify the church I would like every one of you to speak in tongues but even more to prophesy that is why I say tunapojifundisha kuhusu kunena kwa lugha mpya na tafsiri zake unabii unainuka juu haleluya unabii unabii na tukapozungumza juu unabii hapa watu wa Mungu haumaanishi tu wewe utabiri utabiri au maanishi peke yake wewe roho mtakatifu kushuka na uweze kutabiri ama wewe kuwa nabii hata kuhubiri ninapo ninapo eh, ninapo ahubiria sasa hivi i am prophesying to you haleluya you see the broader meaning of the word prophecy kuhubiri ni kutabiri bwana asifiwe lazima kuhubiri ni ku kutabiri uibaji pia ni kutabiri because when you prophesy you speak you speak you speak the things of god you exalt god hallelujah let's continue unless someone interprets so that the church may be unified nataka to skip to skip kutoka hapo twende mstari wa 13 na same chapter biblia inasema hivi for this reason one who speaks in a tongue should pray that they may interpret Uh, so that so that they may interpret what they say for if i pray in in a tongue my spirit prays uh uh-huh. no yako but my mind is unfruitful so what shall i do i will pray with my spirit but i will also uh, pray with my understanding I will sing with my spirit but I will also sing with my understanding otherwise when you are praising God in the spirit 
how can someone else who is now put in the position of an inquirer say amen to your thanksgiving since they do not know what you are saying you are giving thanks well enough but no one else is edifying thank to God when the apostle Paul and Asema Hibi thank to God that I speak in tongues more than all of you but in the church I would rather speak five intelligible words that is what is called prophecy you speak to prophesy you speak five intelligible words to instruct others than 10,000 words in tongues brothers and sisters stop thinking like children in regard to evil be infant but in your thinking be adults in the law it is written with other tongues and through the lips of foreigners I will speak to these people but even then they will not listen to me says the Lord thanks then uh -huh. thanks then are a sign not for believers but for unbelievers prophecy however is not for unbelievers but it is for believers so if the whole church comes together and everyone speaks in tongues and inquire all unbelievers uh, unbelie uh, unbelievers come in will they not say that you are out of your mind but if unbeliever all an inquire comes in where everyone is prophesying like what I am doing now they are convic uh, they are convicted of their of, of sin and are brought under the judgment by all as the secret of their hearts are laid bare so they will fall down and worship God exclaiming God is living among you what then shall we say, brothers and sisters, when you come together, each of you has a hymn, a, a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, or a tongue, or an interpretation. Everyone, uh, everything must be done. Uh, everything must be done so that the church may be built up. If anyone speaks in a tongue, two or the most three should speak one at a time and someone must interpret if there is no interpretation the speaker should do what hallelujah the speaker should do what keep quiet in the church and speak to himself and to god and speak to himself and and to god hi because because of time, but to solve yeah. the whole of chapter 14, I get it to the skip to the story. The Ladini and Tinsa, we believe in the Sahibi. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy and not forbid speaking in. I will be believing in the Sema, to the Bibi, the Kinipia, to Skataza, to Kunena, Kwa, Kuga. But everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Because I must expose the truth and I will also deal with the confusion. Amen. Eh, hey, si tumesama juu kujifundisha karama za roho ni zote. Eh, hey, na ni vizuri neno la Mungu kujifundisha kote ile ni Biblia. Ah, uh, ili mwili wa Kristo uweze kuimalika. Na kwa hivyo tumejifundisha maandiko, uh, uh, tumesoma maandiko mengi na tumeona vile ambavyo kunena kwa lugha ni muhimu katika nyumba ya Mungu. Natakutia kwa kusema hivi, nataka kutilia maana ni muhimu wa kunena kwa lugha mpya. Nataka kusema hivi watu wa Mungu because 
speaking in tongues is very very important lakini pia kumekuwa na challenges kumekuwa na makosa katika nyumba ya Mungu kwa sababu ya ufahamu wakati mwingine ambao umekosekana so nataka kutangulia na kusema hivi the reason why speaking in tongues is very important is because the first sign this is a point for wale wanaoandika the first sign and the evidence of the outpouring of the holy spirit the first sign katika kitabu cha act chapter 2 and the evidence of the outpouring of the holy spirit was accompanied by speaking in tongues hallelujah na ukisoma katika Acts chapter 2 usome kuanzia mstari wa 2 na mstari wa 3 ukiendelea kusoma hadi mstari wa mstari wa 2 na mstari wa 3 Biblia inasema vizuri actually kuanzia mstari wa 2 Biblia inasema kwamba kitu cha kwanza kilicho kidhihirisha kitu cha kwanza kilichofanyika kabla roho mtakatifu hajamwaga hiyo siku ya Pentecost kulikuwa na upepo mkali na kwa hivyo the wind there was wind and the shaking the second thing that happened Biblia inasema kwamba i think verse 4 then they they are they, you know it appeared on the head of those who are waiting upon the holy spirit tons of fire kukaonekana katika vichwa wa vichwa vya wale waliokuwa wanapojea roho mtakatifu wa amwagwe kwao maana walikuwa katika chumba cha juu biblia inasema kulionekana dili za moto juu yao haleluya And so speaking in tongues is very very important. And every one of us who are born again we should desire to speak in tongues. Kwa sababu tunapoenda na lugha mpya, tunanena makuu ya Mungu wakati ambao tumeomba na maneno yetu yamefika mwisho na unaanza kuomba kwa lugha. Unazungumza makuu ya Mungu. Unaingia katika ulimwengu wa roho ni unaanza kuzungumza makuu ya Mungu. And so that is the first point speaking in tongues was the first evidence it was a, a sign and an evidence of the outpouring of the holy spirit na pia ilikuwa imeahidiwa katika yoeli in the book of john chapter 2 book of john chapter 2 verses 28 biblia na ahidi biblia inasema vizuri nabii yoeli alikuwa ametabiri akasema nyakati za mwisho itakuwa kwa roho mtakatifu atamwaga kwa wote wenye mwili roho mtakatifu atamwaga kwa wote wenye mwili wote no one exempted wote wenye mwili na biblia inasema watoto wetu haleluya our sons and daughters will do what we will see visions haleluya na wazee ni nini nasema wanafanya nini wataona maono even the maid servant na kwa hivyo hiyo ilikuwa ni hali na kwa sababu tunajifundisha kuhusu karama za rohoni zile karama zote zimejifundisha zilizo karama za rohoni na tunaamini Mungu atatuhurumia tutakuwa na revival yetu hapa roho mtakatifu atatutembelea kwa njia huu kwenye madhabahu haya wewe na hapa wao Pentecost tukikutana hapa siku eh, eh, katikati ya wiki huwa tunamulilia roho wa Mungu tunamwambia roho mtakatifu tutembee kwenye hii huduma na kwa hivyo roho mtakatifu akitembea kama vile alivyo kuwa ameahidiwa katika Yoweli hapo ndipo tutaanza kushuhudia the gift of the spirit kama za rohoni zikianza kufanya kazi katika nyumba ya Mungu but i want to tell you something watu wa Mungu kwa sababu wengi wetu huwa tunazungumza kuhusu it na eh, huwa tunazungumza kuhusu Yoweli mbili mstari 28 vile Biblia inasema roho mtakatifu atamwoa na kutakuwa na uvuvio lakini nataka kukukumbusha hivi watu wa Mungu roho mtakatifu ili amwagwe kuna maelezo ili roho mtakatifu atembee let me speak about this because it is important because i remember i said tunapojifundisha hizi karama pia na watayarisha tunajitayarisha yale tunayotakiwa kuyafanya and so if you go back to joel chapter 2 verses 12 and 13 verses 12 and 13 joel chapter 2 verses 12 and 13 if you go back there you will realize wakati Yoeli alikuwa anatabiri kabla hatujafika mstari wa 28 Yoeli kuna maagizo aliyokuwa anawaambia wana wa Israeli waliokuwa wanapojea revival waliokuwa wanapojea urejesho huduma hii haya maandiko tumeyapoti hapo hapa Joel chapter 2 verse 
What is written here? John chapter 2 verses 22 to 25. In a zoom that we are restoration. But note this. If you go back to verses 12 and 19, Bibili in a sama kwama. Kabra Rahom Takatifu Hajawa Mugu Alikua Nawaita Watu Wamuru D. Hallelujah. Mugu Alikua, Mugua Hapo, are you there? Mugu Alikua Nawaita Watu Wamuru D. Hi, Wamuru D. and Amelia. See me on Lusu. So before the outpouring of the Holy Spirit comes, there is a coming back to the Lord. There is true repentance. And the prophet was saying, return to God with the whole of your heart. Then do what? With the fasting. Hallelujah. With the weeping. Uh -huh. Now you give it. With the mourning. Now you have to Joel chapter 2 verses 28. To simple fanya kazi kumurudia mungu na meo yetu yote. To simple mtafuta mungu kwa kufunga na kuomba. Na, kusu, na kuhusunika na kuomboleza. Hallelujah. Wapi kanisa na kulia sikuizi. Kanasa kwa. Hallelujah. Wapi kanisa na kulia sikuizi watu wa kulia. Kumurudia mungu. So kwa hiyo uvio hii mtende minasikia kuna nini. Kuna wipi. Hallelujah. Weeping. But not weeping in desperation. It is good weeping. Now, Mimi na mulidia mungu. Na nina muomba mungu atusaidi. Tuanza kumulidia mungu. Kiliyo bacho kina wanyesha. Kama sasa hapa 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 kare. Nona kiwa kandiria tunalia tunamulidia mungu. Hallelujah. 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 Nasi kita nak sama. Ama am tadi kuliah, min tadi ya. Mena min mukio nadi kuliah, muaja nadi min. Sebab aku yang so desperate. Eh, mukio nadi kuliah mesti saya nanti pasti nadi minyak ya minyak ya nadi ya kau minyak minyak. Ini nadi ya kiman ni ko? Actually ada nasi jadi kamari pamoni. Eh, guna mari pak kuliah, nadi guna mari pamoni. You go. The body of Christ today, we are supposed to reach the place of mourning. Kwa sababu ya uwafu, uchafu. Baba ya naya fanyo katika nyuma ya kuku squeezy. Kama matumishu wa mungu, tazikia mchungaji anashitakiwa. Na uwasharati. Na na machukua la prison na washu, na machukua huyo na rara na ye. Anajukua huyo mingine kama ni tano, kama pleza ni mwashu kwa kwa tano, anajukua mwoja, 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 mwoja. Haya ni mbago ya nika ufanyika. Na watu wanakuja wanatushumudia kwezi kwa hivyo wakati mingine. Kwa sababu ya uchafu na na mbago ya nawe nenea maotu kule, amini kuingine katika nyumba ya mungu. So wakinja kwenye huruma nyingine wakute ukari yuliyoko, wakati mingine watu wanashaka. Na wanauliza kwa ni hama ni ya kina nani. Kile tunachofanya, tunanihirisha, tunafanya magizi wa kiyuku na tunataka wiku wa mungu uwe katika juba yake. Hallelujah. And so, before the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, so that the gift of the Spirit can begin working in the house of God, there is that coming back with the whole of our heart, with the fasting, with the weeping and mourning. And we do not mourn like the heathen. There is the mourning of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Kiliyo kizu. Sio kiliyo, najua kuna kabila wa nariyaga Najua kuna kiliyo wa nariyaga na watu na hicho kiliyo wa nariyaga Kinafaka nini? Kinapita kiasi, sio hicho kiliyo wa bacho Kina neema ya mungu It's a good weeping, a good mourning, a good crying to God It is called groaning Because we need God and we need the death, the body of the Holy Spirit So I felt that is important for me to discuss about that because Kulia kwetu na mili tutakabia na tutakabia kulia mungu na tuweke mungu wana. Hiyo diyo itakaya onyesha how desperate we are for the Holy Spirit to move in the church. How desperate we are for the gift of the Spirit to begin working in the 
House of God. Na tuwezi tukamulilia Mungu na tunatembea na Mungu. You know tunamulilia Mungu kutoka kwa mioyo yetu. Tukimwambia Mungu yetu tunavyokuitaji na Mungu atakosa kutukumbuka. Hiyo haiwezekani. Tukimulilia Mungu, Mungu atatutembelea. Na kwa hivyo tumesoma katika First Corinthians chapter 14. Tumesoma mstari kadha. Let me take you back to the to our top, topic today. Kuhusu the gift of talk, uh, talking in tongues and the interpretation. Na tumeona maandiko mengi. Nataka kuwapatia hii kanuni ya kwanza alafu tutaona just two points. Point B there, tumabidi jambo tumalizie. The other point I want to give you the first principle kabla ya sijaelezea ile watu wanatakiwa kuna na kwa ile tunatakiwa kutafsiriwa. Apostle Paul kwa sababu tumesoma maandiko mkisikia na hivyo mmesikia yale maagizo yanayotoa wakati watu wanaenda kwa lugha mpya. So, kanuni ya kwanza nataka kusema hivi. Apostle Paul is not the meaning or opposing the gift of speaking in different tongues. Apostle Paul is not the meaning opposing yeye hapiki kuongea kwa lugha mpya amini kuongea kwa lugha mpya ama kuongea kwa lugha tofauti but he is insisting they must be used in the right way lazima zitumike kwa njia hiyo na sawa they must be used in the right way they must be used properly and in an orderly manner bwana asifiwe narudia kusema hivi watu wa Mungu mtumishi wa Apostle Paul yeye hapiki watu kunena kwa lugha yeye hapiki watu kunena kwa dini katika nyumba ya Mungu kile anachosisitiza kama watu watanena kwa lugha ni wanene kwa lugha kwa mpango haleluya kwa mpango na kwa njia iliyo ya sawa hiyo ndio anayosisitiza na alipofanya hivi amina alipo alipotoa kanuni hii alikuwa anatoa kanuni hii kwa sababu katika kanisa la kwanza kulikuwa na changamoto kumbuka roho mtakatifu alikuwa amemwamba na niliwafundisha tuliona jumapili iliyopita kuhusu the discerning of spirit the gift of discerning spirit na wak, na naamini wakati huo ili mtume paulo aweke maagizo haya kulikuwa na confusion katika jumba la Mungu na kwa hivyo labda kile kilikuwa kinafanyika yule anayehubiri amesimama kwa madhabahu na akiwa amesimama kwa madhabahu haleluya wale niseme mamama bana asifiwe eh mamama sema na waingilia lakini kipawa cha kutabiri sana sana kinakuwa na mama wako pasta yuko kwa madhabahu na hubiri kutoka kwa ile kona dini zinanyoroshwa 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 kabla huyo atamaliza mwingine pale nyuma naye anayoroshwa zake anapiga dini upande ule dini zingine zinanyoroshwa na wewe sasa mchungaji hapo kwa madhabahu anachanganyikiwa anashindwa ni kuwahubiria kama hubiria watu ama ataruhusu watu waongee kwa dini haleluya na kwa hivyo yeye alitoa maagizo mbili ambayo kuongea kwa lugha mpya ama kuongea kwa dini natakiwa katika nyumba ya Mungu yeye hakupinga na ninataka kusema hivi watu wa Mungu katika nyumba ya Mungu kuna oda. Umesikia vile nimesema? Katika nyumba ya Mungu kuna oda. Na mimi kama mchungaji wenu unaniruhusu ninaleta o. Na kwa wakati mwingine mchungaji akisimama aseme stop. Unatakiwa kwa heshima ya Mungu kile ulicho kuu unafanya ufanye nini? Uache. Kwa sababu pia katika kanisa la Mungu kunaweza kuwa na confusion. That is what is called order. Otherwise katika nyumba ya Mungu tukisema kila kitu, mtu kwa mfano anahubiri hapa na mtu anza kuzungumza kwa lugha hapo. Mwingine anazungumza pande ile. Na mimi nilikuwa ninahubiri niache kuhubiri. Kwa hiyo sasa tuamue ni roho mtakatifu ananena na na yule anayezungumza kwa lugha na hiyo labda dini anazo zungumza nazo hakuna mtu anazitafsiri zile dini ambazo ninaweza nika 
acha kuhubiri wakati mtu ameanza kunena kwa hizo dibi ni zile dibi ambazo baada ya huyo mtu kuongea kutakuwa na mtu wa kutafsiri nasikia vile nimesema yes kwa sababu Mungu anaweza kabea na ujumbe lakini mtu akinena kwa ruga na haukuwa wakati wa wakati unaofa it was not during in the time perhaps the wakati wa maombi na kwa hivyo sasa mimi niacha kuhubiri kwa sababu mtu anaenda kwa ruga na kile anachosema hakitafsiriwi that is confusion that is what apostle paul say if that happens then yule anayenena kwa ruga anatakiwa aguzwe aambiwe huu sasa ni wakati wa kuhubiri bana asifiwe ama kuna jambo lingine linalotakiwa kufanywa kwa sababu kila kitu kina wakati wake haleluya nataka wale aina tatu ya dini aina tatu ya different kinds of tongues three different kinds of tongues and we will see how they are supposed to function three three different kinds of tongues nakumbuka nimesema apostle paul alisema wako sitatazo kuenda kwa ruga lakini kuna mambo yanayotakiwa kufanya na kuwekwa pango tunapoenda kwa ruga mbili so the three different kinds of tongues ya kwanza and known heavenly language of the spirit hiyo ni aina moja ya speaking in tongues and known and known heavenly language of the spirit and known hiyo ni kumaanisha kati mtu atanena kwa ruga hiyo haitatafsiriwa na tunaweza ita hii prayer language eh jia ya maombi na hii huwa tunaifanya wakati mwingi katika nyumba ya Mungu. Wakati ambao tunafanya intercessory prayer. Haleluya. Wakati ambao tunaongoza kama wakati ambao barumba walikuwa natuongoza kwa maombi hapa kwa madhabahu yeye mwenyewe hiyo inaitwa prayer language. Yeye mwenyewe anaweza kupatia points kadhaa za kuombea. Yeye mwenyewe anaruhusu ya, kuom, ya kuongea kwa ruga. Haleluya. Na pia wale ambao tuko katika nyumba ya Mungu pia na wewe uko na nafasi yako na uko na uhuru wa kuongea wa ruga mpya that is a, that is the time of intercessory intercession the time of praying wakati wa kuomba na huo ni wakati mtu mwenyewe anajiombea lakini yule anayeongoza hayo maombi ikifika wakati ambao anataka kubeana pointi nyingine hatakiwi kuzuiwa kuzuiwa na yule anayeongea kwa ruga kile ambacho kinaweza kusababisha agojee kidogo ni kama huyo huyo anayeongea kwa ruga kile anachosema kuna mtu atakaye kitafsiri umeelewa vile nimesema na kwa hivyo dini ambazo hazitafsiriwi inaitwa personal prayer language that edifies yourself na tumeona katika amini uh, katika first Corinthians chapter 14 verses 2 bili nasema hivi for anyone who speaks for anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God indeed no one understands them they are a mystery by the holy spirit na kwa hivyo kuna kunena kwa ruga ambapo hakuwezi kutafsiriwa na hiyo ndio inayoitwa ya mtu mwenyewe ananena kwa ruga anajitia moyo yeye mwenyewe anajiedify yeye mwenyewe that person is edifying himself ya pili ya pili aina ya pili ya speaking in tongues inaitwa heavenly language of the spirit heavenly language of the spirit that can be interpreted mtu ananena kwa ruga tumeona kwenye maandiko kuna kunena kwa ruga ambapo kuna tafsiriwa kwa hivyo hiyo ndio ina pili ya speaking in tongues heavenly language of the spirit that is interpreted that can be interpreted na kwa hivyo roho takatifu anashuka aina tuko wakati wa maombi tunafanya warfare haleluya roho takatifu amemshukia mzee ama amemshukia kijana ama amemshukia mama na amenena kwa ruga mpya na baada ya kunena kwa ruga mpya kwa sababu kumbuka tunajifundisha kunena kwa ruga mpya na karama ya kutafsiri hiyo ruga mpya tunazungumza kuhusu kunena kwa ruga mpya na karama ya kutafsiri kwa hivyo yule anayenena kwa ruga mpya asiumi tuko tunafanya warfare kwa mtakatifu ameshuka 
na roho wa Mungu eh roho mtaka alikuwa ameshuka amemshukia mtu na mtu amenena kwa lugha mpya baada ya kunena kwa lugha mpya hizo lugha mpya inatafsiriwa bana asifu kuna kuwa na mtu mwingine haleluya kama ni pastor Julius ameingia katika ulimwengu wa rohoni amenena kwa lugha mpya na amezama duweni haleluya haleluya duweni roho wa Mungu anamshikia na yeye anaanza kutafsiri hiyo lugha na anasema Bwana anasema niko pamoja nanyi watoto wangu mjitie moyo huu mji nimewapa majiti ya mji huu nitayangusha chini na uko pasa chini zamenena kwa lugha alafu Edwin akatafsiri hizo lugha hivyo ndivyo ilivyokuwa katika kanisa la kwanza hizi karama jamani watu wa Mungu naulizwa swali hizi karama za roho ni zilienda wapi ziko tu basta ziko wapi tuzihitaji haleluya nasema tunazihitaji zirudi katika nyumba ya Bwana na ziwe ni lugha za kweli nasikia vile ninasema <laughs> ziwe ni lugha za kweli za kweli sio kuigiza and so that is what i call the heavenly language of the spirit be speaking in tongues and someone else interprets those tongues and so that is uh point number two, heavenly language of the spirit that can be interpreted na hii inafanya kazi wakati ambao kuna kusanyiko when we have the congregations for this wakati kuna kusanyiko la watu wa Mungu watu wamekusanyika na najua kwamba kalama hizi zinafanya kazi kuna mikutano imekuwa ya revivals na unakuta roho mtakatifu ameshuka katika hiyo mikutano kulikuwa na mikutano ya BCI na unakuta revival imeanza hiyo ndio imeanza kushuka hata kama ni kwa viwango vya chini lakini tunataka pia katika nyumba ya Mungu katika mwili wa Kristo katika local churches local churches mahali kama hapa pia hizo kalama zifanye kazi ni vizuri tukie na faida ni kutana mikubwa ambayo tunafanywa na mababa zetu wa kiroho lakini pia nasi tunazihitaji katika our local churches and i'm not saying hizi kalamu hazifanyi kazi lakini watu wa Mungu mtakubaliana na mimi uh, hata kama zinafanya kazi ni kwa viwango vya chini 